Welcome to AATCM, the Emergency Medicine Channel. Today we are going to discuss about a case of a testicular pain. A 27-year-old young male came to the ER with the complaints of testicular pain in the triaging area as per the triaging green, uh, he was triaged into the green area. Okay. On initial assessment, patient uh, had been complaining of testicular pain with the intensity of 7 by 10. So immediately an injection PCM 1 gram IV uh, was given. Okay. Was given. Uh, coming to the uh, history, uh, sample history, patient complains of a testicular pain since the last uh, three hours uh, in the left testicle. Site is the left testicle since the three hours. Uh, suddenly started with uh, sharp, uh, uh, sharp pain and uh, no radiation. And uh, patient had been complaining of continuous pain with worsening of the symptom. There has been no any ex exacerbating or relieving factors. Exacerbating or relieving factors. Okay. So a 27 year old male has come with a testicular pain since duration one hour. Three hours. Three hours of duration. Three hours duration testicular pain, sudden onset. The only history that we would like to have is there is any direct trauma or any after any physical activity he has developed this. Mm -hmm. That is the main question. Yes, Anything is there? Uh, sir, associated uh, mm. symptoms uh, like there is no any. Uh, history of any trauma patient uh, had no any history of difficult or painful urination no history of any urethral discharge or blood in urine no uh, history of uh, associated symptom of uh, vomiting one episode had been there when the pain started and no change of any bowel movement in the last two three days no history of any chest pain uh, no history of any breathing difficulty and uh, patient gives a history of uh, cycling for the last uh, cycling and physical exercise for the last uh, three days Last three days he had ex over exerted. Over exerted. So, oh, so he routinely doesn't uh, use to do this. He has started his uh, physical, physical fitness activity. with the last three days. Sir. Okay. So after that he has developed this. Yes. So since last three hours he has got pain. So uh, before that three hours he never had, he any, never pain. had any pain. So what will be the history like whether he was weathering, wearing his inners, whether he had uh, found it difficult or suddenly he felt it? Uh, while he was exercising, suddenly he had... Uh, while he was exercising. While he was exercising. Okay. Okay. While he was exerting, he found out oh, this. Okay. Initially went to the local hospital, took a tablet of painkiller, mm -hmm. but that wasn't subsiding. So he was brought to our hospital. Okay. So it's an acute testicular pain. pain. So uh, no history of any fever, burning oxygen. There is no history of fever. No, no radiation? No radiation. No radiation. Okay. So what are the possibility of a testicular pain in an... Uh, 27 year old male uh, what will the what are the differentials that you will think of uh, differentials uh, we can think of first uh, in the emergency room is the acute uh, testicular torsion has to be ruled out apart from that we can think of epididymal orchitis or uh, appendages of the testis mm. torsion of the appendicular testis apart from that uh, apart from the testis the abdominal components of inguinal hernias mm. or uh, foreigners gangrene so the most common reason for testicular pain that will can be a referred also. pain uh, so that is a stone. Stone. Uretic stone. That is the most common when you see testicular pain, patient complaining of pain in the scrotum. Most common thing that we want to think is a referred pain. So the referred pain, then if you have got direct uh, pain over the testis, then we have to consider whatever differential you have uh, told. And one more thing, important thing is a scrotal hematoma. Stone. Scrotal hematoma. Stone. That is the reason why I asked whether there is any history of trauma, whether playing football, cricket or something, there was any injury. Scrotal hematoma also we need to consider. So these are the differentials that you need to think of. The most common being a referred pain to start off with, but when it is a direct uh, uh, testicular pain for this age group, what is the common age group for testicular torsion? Adolescents uh, 15 to Around 20. 13 to 18 years. So that is the common age group for torsion. But for uh, this patient is 27 year old. So 27 year old also can have, but it is more frequent in 13 to 18 years of age group and even in elderly also it is possible i'm not saying it is not possible but when age as age increases our differentials narrows down to probably an epidemic orchitis but there will be some amount of fever associated with fever warmth and all those things but torsion also can have this but fever usually not associated and it will not be enough an acute okay. onset it will have a gradual onset initially slowly to start off and gradually the pain has increased Basic, okay. uh, regarding the testicular uh, component, the testicular pain, there are three main differentials in emergency scenarios. Testicular torsion, epididymitis and appendage torsion. The differential features would be the history, in the history taking. The pain onset would be sudden in testicular uh, torsion and in epididymitis it will be usually gradual and progressive. And regarding the nausea vomiting, uh, testicular torsion is more likely whereas epididymitis and appendage, torsion of the appendage of the testis is less likely. Okay. 
and uh, most important clinical examination wise so you have to differentiate you go ahead with that uh, testicular examination how will you First, do a testicular examination uh, initially the testicular examination we start with look feel pet touch uh, first on looking the left testis was uh, swollen erythematous and uh, what will be the position of the testis that is a yeah. normal normal thing you should start off with what is a normal anatomy of the testis normal anatomy would be the vertical position in the posterior laterally the epididymis would be there so it will be vertical vertical okay then then uh, in this patient the testis was in the horizontal Okay, on the affected side, it was in the horizontal. Right. It's actually swelling. Once we palpate, then then we, then we came, came to know to that. Know. Okay, was, then uh, next uh, to uh, feel it. Uh, on feeling it, uh, the patient uh, there was no any warmth. Uh, tenderness was present on okay. touching it, and. Uh, uh, If you suspect a torsion at this point, you will try it for a detorsion. If we are having a center consisting of uh, uh, urology mm. uh, surgical management, we never should. Mm. Otherwise, otherwise, you are in a peripheral setup. You the patient has come in with three hours. We need to first do a scoring system. The nearest uh, referral <laughs> center is to use. Tell about scoring system. That's okay. Nearest referral, you are always or a surgeon availability is eight hours from your center. So what will you do? Uh, there is a techniques for te- reversing the testicular torsion, mm. which will be which we can try. Ah, like, which we have to do. To there is no other option. option. You have to do. This is the priority because you only got six to eight hours. Mm. Uh, already three hours is passed now. So we got another four to five hours only. So the other center is reaching for a surgical. It will again uh, you are wasting your time. You should definitely try in that scenario. But when you have a facility available, you can definitely wait and if maybe you can go ahead with the diagnosis also by doing a Doppler. But when you suspect a testicular torsion, the most important thing is to you have to relieve the torsion as early as possible. So that should be our key. Whatever be the method you are using, you have to relieve the torsion. If you don't have facility for a surgical fixation, you have to detorsion it. So how will you do the detorsion? Uh, open book method is the most common method used. Yeah. Usually, the testicular torsion will be in the medial side in seventy five percent and twenty five percent lateral. So in the open book method, we need to be uh, rotating the left side in the clockwise direction, mm. like towards the tie, and the right side towards the other tie. Opposite anti- side. Or, Anti clockwise. Anti clockwise direction. So that so is what common. On relieving, if their uh, actually pain is relieving, then we can say that we are relieving the torsion. But if pain is increasing, then we should withhold and re- try in the reverse direction. The reverse direction. So seventy five percentage of the time, yeah, it will work. But twenty five percentage. Fallacy is that uh, we are given a painkiller, so that can. See, uh, whatever be the thing, you have to understand that there is a process that is going on. There is an inflammatory process that is going on. Whatever painkiller you are going to give, it is going to be temporarily relieve the pain only. Once you are going and touching, even after giving a painkiller, if you go and touch the patient's testes, he will have significant pain. Yes. So that is not going to come down. Relatively, it will be low. That is only thing. Relatively, it is difficult. Will be, yeah, but uh, you will might have uh, some difficulty. But as compared to the previous one, he might not have experiencing that much amount of pain. The testicular torsion, because if it is an epidemo orchitis, if you are given an antibiotic and an anti-inflammatory, maybe the pain will subside. But in case of a torsion, it is a physically it is torsion. So unless and until you are leaving it the pain is not going to subside so uh, that part you can you need to definitely try either of the method when you have in a peripheral setup so otherwise it's okay you can refer you can get it evaluated and uh, then you can uh, uh, do the uh, detorsion by a surgical fixation so three differential that you said to remember that is the appendages uh, torsion epidemo orchitis and torsion testis so the three most important thing that in the ed then the investigation of the choice will be an ultrasound, ultrasound followed by doppler okay. so that is a straightforward uh, evaluation we wanted to know and uh, information that what we are going to gather by doing this whether uh, whether the vascularity is preserved or compromised depending mm. on that uh, the surgical the flow you will be able to understand how is the testicular flow mm. if the testicular flow is reasonable then there is a point in doing a surgical fixation but there is no t- testicular flow already it is ischemic mm. there is no point in uh, even after a surgical fixation it is not going to help so usually within 4 to 5 hours we can salvage the testis but it is beyond that we will not be Okay. Apart from that, uh, we can follow the algorithm of when the patient comes to an ED with uh, scrotal pain less than twelve hours. Usually, we start with the uh, twist score. The components of twist score are uh, swelling, which is given two points. If the testicle is hard, two points. If there is an absent cremastic reflex, reflex, one point. Nausea or vomiting, one point, and high riding testis, one point. Uh, so, depending on the score, we divide into low risk, intermediate risk, and high, high risk. risk. Low risk is zero, intermediate is one to five, high risk is six to seven. Uh, it also depends upon the person assessing. If there is an uh, EMT staff or technician above five, we have to 
send the patient for surgery. surgery. If it is a medical officer or the urologist, then 6 and 7, we can take it for surgery. Definitely surgical reduction. So, then uh, how will you differentiate epidemic or cases with uh, testicular torsion? In the examination, especially in the examination finding, then testicular torsion, differencing between the testicular torsion and epidemic or cases, there is French sign. On the elevation of the affected testis, if the pain reduces, it can be most probably an epididymo or cases. Okay. If the pain isn't relieving, then it can be torsion. So, that's other, a simple bedside test that what we can Other do. things is the cremastic reflex, the same side, uh, if we stroke Absolutely. the inner thigh, if there is no, the test is not able to re re rotate, then we can consider it to be a torsion. Torsion. So these are the these two signs. These tests are sensitive itself, but uh, history-wise also should be evaluated before we consider considering it to be torsion because so, of this. Okay. Suppose if it is torsion, definitely go in for a surgical fixation. They will do the appendages, spermatic cord, and all those fixation will be done. And if it is ischemic, they will go for mm -hmm. an orchidectomy. Mm -hmm. So that is the usual treatment option. If it is epidemic orchidus. So if it is epididymo orchitis, the initial management would be as any infection, starting with a painkiller as the patient is having pain and antibiotic coverage. In this, the other history part which we need to take would be the sexual history because we can divide epididymo orchitis involving STS like gonorrhea or chlamydia or the normal non-sexual. Sexually transmitted. Sexual will be in the reproductive age, non-sexual would be Very common in uh, India. We yeah. have to think of filarial also. Uh, in the endemic regions, endemic filarial. Filarial also, we need to think in terms. So, uh, if the patient is on dihydryl carbonosin, mm -hmm. 100 mg TID, we need to give and what will be the drug of antibiotic of choice? If it is sexual, it will be ceftriaxone plus doxycycline. If it is non-sexual, we need to give uh, ofloxacin, sir. Quinolones, like Quinolones, you eat for uh, UTI, yeah, ofloxacin, but doxycycline is a very good agent. Even if, uh, mm -hmm. if it is non-sexually transmitted also, doxycycline is a very good agent mm -hmm. which can be prescribed for this group of patients. That so will be easily given till for two weeks. But uh, the other problem with epididymo is if it is not resolved completely, patient will be recurrently coming with the testicular pain. Testicular pain. Only thing you have to think is that you have to completely resolve it because the, the course of antibiotic you need to give in and maybe post sequelae also he can have. Mm -hmm. Some amount of swelling and uh, tenderness and uh, some uh, sort of edema can be there for a long time. We need to tell them there is nothing to worry. But... Uh, in an ED, if there is somebody is coming with a testicular pain, the most common can be a referred pain. That is the mm -hmm. one thing. If it is a direct, you have to expose the patient adequately and go ahead with a local examination. Starting off with a local examination, three differential, appendage and if it is more gangrene also. Fornis gangrene, we will definitely see when we are examining. examining. There will be a lot of uh, gangrenous yeah. tissue and all. But uh, they will not uh, just come with pain. They will have other discharge okay. and all those things. So, three things, an acute uh, presentation, we have to consider these things. And as you mentioned, uh, we can do the clinical examination, differentiate between these two, commonly epididymo orchitis follow, uh, with torsion, and go ahead with your ultrasound with Doppler. And uh, if it is torsion, pathway is straight away, go ahead and for a surgical fixation. If there is no center where you don't get this, you have to think for detorsion. detorsion. And also, epididymo orchitis, you treat accordingly as per STD or non-STD. <laughs> Doxycycline holds good in both the areas. So, you can give doxycycline and if the patient is coming from endemic area, when we see a patient in Kerala, we definitely treat them with DEC also. Uh, Diethyl carbamosin also we will give 100 mg TAD because file areas is a little bit rampant and endemic in some part of Kerala, but uh, we don't want to uh, miss that point. Mm. So, otherwise, the uh, seminiferous tubule, everything, if it is get affected, it is going to be a permanent damage. Those things that we don't want to happen, so we will give DEC 100 mg TAD for 7 days. So, what happened to this patient? This this patient uh, was taken in for the surgery because ultrasound was showing testicular torsion. The right side was low vascularity. Okay. And was operated uh, like orchidopexy was done, and the other side of testis also orchidopexy was done. And this. Okay. So that is the other important okay. thing. The, he's more potential because he already one. Uh, we are doubtful whether the ischemia was plus or minus 27 year old, and uh, he need to have a child and all those things. So we have to be other side also. If there is a risk, we have to fix, fix that other side also. also. Okay. So, only thing in elderly, we have to think in terms of a malignancy. Oh. Testicular pain, mm -hmm. elderly, they are coming with testicular carcinoma, any seminoma, malignancy also we need to look in for. And also the lymph node, which is getting drained. Mm -hmm. Because testicular lymph nodes drain into... Inguinal and femoral nodes. Inguinal, femoral and into the parioptic also, That's sometimes it will get drained. And also we have to look for... So, sub -clamp. Supraclavicular Supra lymph nodes. Supra so that is one thing that you need to. When elderly age group not fitting for an epidemic or cases, they are coming with a testicular pain. Only thing a tumor can bleed, so they can come with an hematoma, and that is the reason why suddenly they are presenting. They will not be concerned. So all those things very rarely you have to think in that terms. Trauma related hematoma also needed to be 
uh, thought of. Okay. Thank you.